We are able to calculate the exact amount of energy that is absorbed or emitted by an electron in a hydrogen atom as the electron moves from one energy level to another. This equation is called the Rydberg equation. And again, I wanna make a note here that this equation is only for electron transitions in the hydrogen atom. We don't have an equation to help us calculate the energy of electron transitions for any other atoms, only for hydrogen. The Rydberg equation is right here. The Rydberg equation um, calculates the change in energy. So remember that Greek letter delta, which looks like a triangle, is used to symbolize change. So this means the change in energy is equal to negative 2.18 times 10 to the negative 18 the units of, of joules, which are the energy units, and that is multiplied by 1 over the final energy level squared minus 1 over the initial energy level squared. So we're looking at the final energy level and the initial energy level. Let's do an example of using the Rydberg equation. In this problem, we're being asked to calculate the wavelength in nanometers of the photon that's emitted by a hydrogen atom when its electron drops from n equals 4 to n equals 2. So in general, anytime you're being asked to calculate anything and it tells you it's a hydrogen atom, the only option that you have is using the Rydberg equation. Now with the Rydberg equation, we do have three variables. We have the change in energy, oops, we have the change in energy, we have the final energy level, and we have the initial energy level. You have to be provided with two of those three variables. So in this particular problem, you're being provided, we're being provided with the two energy levels, and we're gonna use that to calculate delta E. But you could be given a problem where um, they provide you with the change in energy level and the final, and you're asked to calculate the initial, or maybe the change in energy level and the initial, and you're asked to calculate the final. Either way, you're gonna be given two of these pieces of information. Let's go ahead and start by plugging this stuff into the Rydberg equation. Now you might be saying, wait a minute, this problem is not asking us to calculate the change in energy, it's actually asking us to calculate the wavelength. But we do have a way of going from delta E to the wavelength or delta E to the frequency. So we have to start with delta E and then we will convert it as necessary. 2.18 times 10 to the negative 18 joules. Now we need to um, figure out of our two energy levels which one is the initial and which one is the final and this is just really in terms of the direction that the electron is going so it's going from n equals four so that means this is our initial because that's where it starts and it's going to the n equals two so that's our final because that's its destination so one over the final energy which is two squared so it's going to be two squared minus one over the initial energy level, four, that'll be four squared. And all of this is going to give us the change in energy. So let's get the calculator out and we'll plug these numbers in. Now I'm gonna do, um, because I don't have a graphing calculator here, I'm gonna do this part of the equation first and then I'll multiply by that number right there. So I have, for this, I'm gonna do one divided by four, and for this, I'm gonna do one divided by 16. One divided by four minus one divided by 16. And then I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna multiply it by this number. And I'm not gonna put the negative sign in the calculator, I'm just gonna remember that it's there. 2.18 times 10 to the minus 18. Minus 18. So my change in energy is negative 4.09 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So what that's telling me, let's think about what this negative sign means. What this is telling me is that my photon, or excuse me, my electron is losing energy. It's losing 4.09 times 10 to, the 19, 10 to the minus 19 joules. I don't really need to think that much about the negative sign anymore um, because what I'm going to do now is calculate 
the wavelength from the change in energy. And the negative sign is not really relevant anymore in the calculation. So all that this negative sign is telling me is that the electron lost energy. If it was a positive sign, that would mean that the electron gained energy. L electron losing energy, that just means that it gave off a photon. So the photon that was emitted by this electron had this much energy, a photon of energy equal to 4.09 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. And now what we can do is take that energy and use it to figure out what the wavelength is of the photon. So to do that, we have two equations that we can use. We have E equals H nu, or we could use E equals H C over lambda. And for this particular problem, because we're being asked to calculate the wavelength, this is the form of the equation that's going to make the most sense. So that'll be the one that we will use. I'm just going to move it over like that. And what I'm going to do is algebraically rearrange this equation. E times lambda equals hc. So I've just done some algebra there. And I'm going to do that one more time because what I'm trying to do is isolate this lambda variable, which is our unknown. So I've just done, in these two steps here, I've just done some rearranging to rewrite this equation so that the wavelength has been isolated as a variable. And now I can just plug my numbers in. H, Planck's constant, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joules seconds. C, the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And the en energy, which is 4.09 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. You can see that when we do the math on this, our joule units will cancel, and our second units will also cancel, and our wavelength will be left in units of meters. So let's go to the calculator, and let's do this math right here. And, and we'll have a little bit more to do before this problem is actually done. So we have 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34. If you have a graphing calculator, you might actually have H and C, the values of them, programmed into your calculator, which is definitely worth checking out because that could save you some time and you're entering these numbers in. Divided by 4.09 times 10 to the negative 19. So this is 4.86 times 10 to the negative 7 meters. Our unit is meters. Now the problem is asking us to calculate our wavelength in nanometers, which is a much more logical unit because this looks like it's very, very small. So what we're going to do here is a nanometer to meter conversion. Nano is the prefix for 10 to the negative 9. So that means that one nanometer is 10 to the negative 9 meters. And so what I'm going to do here next in my last step so just take this wavelength and divide by 10 to the minus 9. 1 times 10 to the minus 9. And that gives me a wavelength of 486 nanometers.